Welcome back, folks, to the April 2017 ICT Mentorship content. We're teaching ICT Day Trading Model. This is Lesson 4, specifically teaching projecting daily highs and lows. Okay, as we just mentioned in the previous teaching, Lesson number 3, Central Bank Dealers Range, when we talk about the most likely sell days moving up as high as three standard deviations and most buy days moving down and making the low of the day as low as three standard deviations from the central bank dealers range we can take this one step further the range at which price works within the protractionary state away from the central bank dealers range in other words are we moving higher away from the central bank dealers range for a sell-off or a sell day, how much of that range are we moving? Now, this is not Fibonacci extensions or projections or anything like that. We're looking specifically at the range that IPTA will go into protractionary state and move counter the direction of the intended direction of the day. In other words, it's the Judas swing. We don't necessarily have to know beforehand to the PIP what the extension is going to be away from the central bank dealers range. We just need to know what it is after the move has already ensued. So even if we get it wrong, okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a moment. Say you don't get it right in London, but you're able to capitalize on a continuation in New York. How far in the future will price reach based on IPTA and using the central bank dealers range? That's what this teaching will give us. And just like we showed with the previous slide, ideal scenarios are going to be seen with no more than two standard deviations. Usually that's about the, the bulk of buy and sell days. Uh, you'll see price go down many times just one standard deviation, but two is generally the general rule of thumb. But across the board, as a general rule of thumb, they generally don't like to go beyond three standard deviations. And we already assumed the role for the use of four standard deviations in the previous teaching. Okay, just a quick brief review because I don't know when you're going to watch the lesson three in review. So I'm going to use these slides again because it's salient for this topic. When we look at the central bank dealers range again, the range between 2 o'clock and 8 p.m., that range is ideally best suited for our use less than 40 pips and again preferably 20 to 30 pips we move to the sidelines and we do not look to trade with the central bank dealers range in our repertoire when the range is greater than 40 pips and again we're focusing on nailing down where the high of the day on the low of the day may be formed Okay, and we always look at the central bank dealers range in terms of using the spread of the wick to wick high to low range between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. New York time. And I like to look at the bodies, highest high in the form of an open or a close and the lowest low in the form of an open or a close, not the wicks. So I get the range in the bodies, but then I also do it on the wicks as well because you want to do Everything you see in this teaching here, you're going to do the same thing using the wicks, but I'm teaching it through the use of the bodies because that's predominantly what I go to first. I get the ranges and projections and measurements based on the bodies of the candles. Okay, so now. Now we get to the part where most of you have been waiting for a long time to learn this. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not sure why I'm doing it. <laughs> it's one of those things that I've kept for a long, long time. And I promised that you would learn it in this mentorship. So um, if you are ever in the sharing spirit, if you're ever in the Robin Hood mentality, you know, you want to give to everyone else that aren't a part of this mentorship. Um, this is one of those things you just really, really, really want to keep to yourself. It's not common knowledge. It's not out there anywhere else. Believe me, 
when you start looking at it and seeing it, you'll it's mind-boggling. It really is mind-boggling how precise you can get. But we we showed the standard deviations and the application of thereof. Okay, and obviously it looks like just grabbing the best ones and, and doing that, and there it is. It's as simple as that, and it's all pure hindsight. But if you look at what I'm going to show you in this teaching and go back to the analysis during the time when we were looking at the market like this, uh, you'll see the levels that I had given on the chart index. They're all there. Okay. So we're going to take a look at every one of these examples with the exception of the 58 pip uh, central bank dealers range because that's a nix. We don't do anything for that particular day, but we will comment on that when we get to that second uh, example. Okay, so let's go out to a daily chart, and I'm going to ask you, what do you see here? Okay, I'm drawing your attention to a specific level with that little trend line, blue line, and that's the segment of price action that we're looking at in terms of those examples. And I'm going to highlight that little area in this white box. Okay, so we're looking at this whole entire reference point here. And again, I'm going to count you to go back to the time when we were talking about the cable and analysis and all of the charts that were shared. Okay, go back and look at that. So none of this stuff is cherry picking, okay? So what we're doing is, is we're looking at the marketplace using the PD array matrix, and we're blending it with time and price theory. So we're looking at IPTA data ranges. We're looking at PD array matrix. Are we in a premium or discount? The market trades down in the lower range of that white rectangle until it hits a bullish order block. What I've done there is I've taken the Sunday candle and the Monday candle, blending that small little Sunday candle and Monday candle into one candle, blending the two bodies together. And I got a measurement of that and I projected it across the chart. And you can actually go back and look at your notes and look at the forum. And I've counsel you to download the charts every day I do them because you can keep track and see that I don't make any changes I don't go back and re-edit them you get them as I see it so that way you can compare what I'm explaining to you here it was exactly outlined in terms of the PD arrays specifically I even tell you that's a mean threshold of a bullish order block there so price hits that level creates the first of three up candles and now we're going to go into those examples and break it down Okay, folks. Okay, here we are. We're at that point where this stuff starts to get really, really interesting. So, when we look at these examples, okay, this is where the price has traded up into a premium on the daily chart. And we did our standard deviations, okay, and we see price that was on a daily chart in a premium at this time. We have a Bullish candle right for the down move here that gives us a bearish order block. That low comes in at 125.93. The high comes in at 125.97. So it trades up into the body of the bearish order block. Standard deviation of two. Price extends up to the standard deviation right to the pip and starts to trade off for the rest of the day when we have the standard deviation arrived at based on a PD array in other words we're looking at a premium PD array bear shorter block price in a daily premium hits it in London have a protractionary state in the marketplace due to swing in London goes right to the pip and trades lower the question is, is how low will it go? Well, you have to look at the range that was created by the central bank dealer's range protractionary state. In other words, how much of, of a standard deviation did we see? Because that becomes the known range to work with, and it becomes our multiplier as well. So when the market looks to fill the numbers, and I'll tell you what that means when we get to it, we use this reference point here. So it has to actually, the actual standard deviation range that we use for the central bank dealers range and all the standard deviations it uses 
to make the high or low of the day in London, that becomes your measurement. Okay, so what we have here is the market showing us a midnight in New York candle, vertical line, and then 1800 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, New York time. And again, each day, midnight New York, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, midnight New York, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, midnight New York, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, and I'm going to give you the London kill zone reference points now. And this is that weekly, I'm sorry, the daily premium PD array up here. So price trades up into it and starts to sell off. So in this time element here, this gives us our London close time of the day. So this candle here starts it. This is the middle of the London kill zone close. And then we have this candle here, right there, that creates the uh, the projected London close time window. But then we have ultimately two o'clock, where we actually see the close of our highest point. In other words, the, usually the higher low, even on a really long-winded trending day, two o'clock usually caps the higher low of the day. If we if we continue through London close kill zone. Or basically, if we go past noon New York time, uh, we look for it to go to two o'clock and dribble down or run up until that that specific time of the day. So all of these days, we don't have anything on this day here because the central bank dealer's range was 58 pips, regardless if we used the wicks as the high and low or if we used the bodies high and low. It doesn't make a difference. The, the point is, it's still too much of a central bank dealer's range to use for our projections in here. So we have to skip on this day here, but we use other tools, which we'll explain in a moment. Uh, the daily bullish order block uh, price trades down into that on this big central bank dealers range day. Trades down into the bullish order block here and it finds momentum to trade higher. And then we have the scenario where we'd expect to see price move higher on a bullish discount PD array. And the same thing here, continuing up, looking to close in our gaps over here, which we'll look at in a moment. So when we have this range here, price moves into a projectionary state up to standard deviations. What you do is you take that range. And yes, I do all this by hand. Okay, so we have our range. And you just lay that on the bottom of the central bank dealers range. And you start layer them, layering them down. You hold down control, drag your image away, click on it and drag away with the control button held down. Right there. Okay, so we have to blend two things now, time and price theory. So we're looking for this whole range of two standard deviations projected from the central bank dealers range low. This is going to be a bearish day. So we have one standard deviation of the total standard deviations used for the central bank dealers range to call the high of the day. So we have one of those standard deviations, two of those standard deviations, three of those standard deviations. Why am I doing three? Is because price kept going lower, 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 lower until we get to the time of day right in here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a vertical line delineating the beginning and the end of the London kill zone, or the London close rather. So this candle closes it at noon, this is 11, and it starts as early as 10 o'clock in New York time. Okay, and we have this projected low. So I'm going to use this line here. And yes, the charts will look a little bit busy for a moment. And we'll project this out in time. Okay, so we could take profit here on this day. Uh, the low comes in at 124.76. The close on that candle stops right at two standard deviations of the central bank dealers range. Right there, you see that? Boom, hits it. Okay. Yes, it wicks down a little bit more. I'll let you see it. A little bit more than that, but not by much. Okay. And now we're going to look at the 1800, which is the cap of the day. There's the low, and there's our projected low. 
right here. 124.40. We called 124.41, so it was off by one pip. Okay, so time wise, we looked for it to occur here. It just fell a little bit short, but it had to go one more standard deviation because it kept drifting lower. So it, there's nothing wrong with just taking profits here and leaving something on for the rest of the day because there's a discount PD array of a bullish order block down here that we saw on the previous slide. That would be your objective. But you can take profits time of day wise here with two standard deviations of the central bank dealers range, two standard deviations used to make the high of the day. So again, in summary, we're taking the total range used of all the standard deviations, one, two, three, counting the central bank dealers range always. So we have three of them. So we get a mock-up of that range and then project it from the low on sell days. It's one, two, three, and it gives you the uh, IPTA projected daily range low. Okay, I'm going to take this off. Okay, and we can't do anything with this one here. Um, we'll have to wait, get, get new information. And the next day here, we have our criteria here where it's a small enough range, the central bank dealer's range. We do one standard deviation down. Why are we going down one standard deviation? Because we have the bullish order blocks in here and an old bullish order block back here. Price trades down into it, clears out even the rejection block, which would be the bodies of the candle, sweeps through that in London, one standard deviation, misses it by two pips. Okay, so this is going to be a time where you just don't get it exactly, but it's still calling one standard deviation. So we get a range, okay, of these two together. So what you do, I'll borrow this. Okay, and I'm getting a measurement of that total range. It's almost the same thing, actually. It's pretty interesting. Okay, so we have one, two. Okay, two projected standard deviations up. That gives us a projected high. And I'm going to tell you why I stopped here before you start thinking, oh, you're cherry picking. Okay, so we have the projected high called here. Notice that this wick right here goes through our projected idea of where price should go. But this one stops right to the pip. Here's our time window when it starts on this candle. So it was a little bit early, one hour early making the well, not one hour early, but in the nine o'clock hour of New York time, it made the high of the day. Then 10 o'clock, it made this candle's high, 11, and then noon here. Why did it go up to this level here? Forget the time element, because you're never going to have that perfectly, but it just gives us a ballpark figure time-wise when they anticipate the move to unfold. But I want you to look back over here. We have a candle. It makes a low, and the close comes off that low by a little bit. Then this candle opens, trades up a little bit. So all this buy side delivery vacancy, okay, or void of buy side delivery, it's only sell side delivery, begins at this candle's low, okay, at 125.26. So from this candle's high here at 25.03 to this candle's low at 25.26, we have... 23 pips of range to close in right up to this point here. So we can look at that like this. Here is the fair value gap that needs to be closed in. It does it right there and goes just a pip or two above it, closing in this fair value gap from this high to this low. So it closes that in. So there's a reasonable expectation for us to take profit there because we want to get out early anyway, but that's why it went to that price point using the PD arrays. Okay, so nothing's changed. There's no hum, you know, no hocus pocus. It's all stuff that you've learned, but now we're applying it with a great deal of precision and using time elements. Okay. So we went two standard deviations up. If we were to go three, if we went three up, that would took us up to the bear shorter block. But we were getting close to the time window. So while we could have expected this to occur, Two is about right because we're going to close in the fair value gap as we were running up here. And it became late in the day on New York for London close overlap. So that's why we'd expect to see price peter out at that point. Again, here we have two standard deviations down. It goes right to the pip. 
So we get a measurement of this entire range of two standard deviations for that particular day. Okay, so we have our range defined. So you have that one. Two. Okay, so we have two potential standard deviations up. And also, when price trades down two standard deviations, what we're actually seeing is it trades down to another discount PD array, which is these three consecutive down candles. All we're going to do is extend this over, and you'll see the overlap. Boom. Okay, so price trades down, hits it. The opening on this candle is 124.36. The low on this candle is 124.36. Precision. Two standard deviations, okay? And as a general rule of thumb, I like to always throw two on just to see what would line up. So on the first one, we see price could reach up to this fair value gap in here. So this candle high and this candle low, we left a little bit of uh, sell side delivery only so there's a buy side liquidity void that we can see a trade up into it's more specifically this candle not this one i'm sorry this candle here so we can look at that frame that out here okay so on this day price trades up here's the noon close of london this candle right here trades up closes in to the bearish order block it goes inside of the second deviation. So while there still may be some range permitted based on the projections, it's the PD arrays that call the shot. Okay, it's, just, it's not the magic of these projections. These projections will lead you to an overlap of time and price. So we're looking at the extension of the range, two standard deviations, measure that projected above from the eight, uh, consolidation of the central bank dealer's range high. We place that on there one standard deviation that one alone would have been enough and you could have took profits right there and that would have been fine and just left that little piece on there for the fair value gap to fill in and let the rest of the people chase that the second one you can have a little piece on still once it closes in the fair value gap again you would take another portion of your trade off and then see if it has any room to trade higher ultimately it never does but that's the that's the way you use it in other words you're using the, the london close Kill zone, London close, kill zone, London close, kill zone. The standard deviation range from the central bank range per tractionary state. In other words, how many standard deviations does it go up? That's your key. Okay, that's the thing that it makes IPTA reach for it. Now, it will go those many blocks down until it reaches the time of day where we expect the range to cap. That means it's if it's a New York uh, session reversal like we see here now we're not using the range here because the central bank uh, dealer's range is too too extended but price trades down into a new york session reversal because it hits a daily bullish order block and then that's our weekly low and the price has a slightly bullish day intraday on the next day and then we have our setup going into the rally on march 30th trading down into a rejection block bullish order block overlap and then two standard deviations up, nails it. Now we didn't get the exact range high in here, but using the fair value gap in here, it would have got you real close, two pips away from it. So you can't argue about that. That's sometimes you're gonna be right to the pip, sometimes you're gonna be just short one or two pips, and other times it'll be just maybe five or six pips above. And there's nothing wrong with leaving a little bit of that on the table. And if you're looking for that always, I'm not gonna be able to help you with that measure of uh, precision. So by blending these things like this, it gives us an overlap of central bank dealers range projections okay and let me remind you that the precision really is on the entry side of the low on the buy days and the high on the sell days that's the standard deviations uh, tactic now where this will get you in trouble is you're going to try to apply these standard deviations based on the range between two o'clock in the afternoon, 8 p.m. New York time, you're gonna to try to do it every single day. And you're gonna forget about the importance of having a range between 20 and 30 pips for the central bank dealer's range. It has to be less than 40. And you have to have a directional bias. Remember, we were in a premium up here. We saw a price coming down to a, 
a discount PD array, which is the bullish order block, reasonably expected to bounce. Bounce it does. Okay, so to get into buy side. Boom, it's one standard deviation. Now I could have done two standard deviations, okay, and traded down below these wicks. Could have done that. But it already hit this order block, and we found this low in here. The body's equal in here. We swept it. Didn't get quite down there, no problem, big deal. Even if you missed this move, look at this one here. You make up for it the next day. Is it a trade every single day? No. That's what I'm trying to show you. By sitting down with you every single trading day and using the things that you've learned thus far in the order that you've been learning them, you can see that it doesn't equate to getting money every single day. Now, um, some of you are in here using other tools and using things of your own. Uh, you're in your own discovery of my tools and such, and you're able to find some setups. That's fine. That's great. But when we do live sessions, I don't want folks trying to call out what they think is going to happen, unless I'm specifically asking you, because I'm trying to keep the learning curve, basically everyone in the same mindset. Because if I can hold you all collectively as long as I can in that mindset, you'll hopefully learn in the closest way possible, step by step with each other. And some of you are a little bit more advanced because you've been using my stuff a little bit longer than the mentorship started, but a lot of us are in here are talking for the first time and we're using the content you know in a graduate modular state and this is the way you learn it so by blending these things again this has nothing to do with elliott wave it doesn't have anything of supply and demand it's all interbank delivery okay so this is the science if you will behind ipta calling the daily high and low please please understand that this is something that should not be out there on youtube if you see this on YouTube, send me an email at innercircletrader at gmail.com. Tell me that it's on there. Send me the link, and I will flag it and have, have YouTube take it down. None of you would have permission. None of you have permission to post this anywhere, and I certainly don't want it posted on online video hosting mediums or made available to other people. So it's just too good to be out there in, uh, in the public. Um, I debated whether or not I was even going to include this. If I would have kept it out, you never would have known it anyway. But you would have you would have missed how I'm pretty much calling the highs and lows when there's specific times of the day and times of the week and times of the month where it lines up. This is how I do it. So hopefully you found this uh, insightful. I'm sure some of you are going to be nuts about it, go through all your charts, and uh, this weekend will probably be a very uh, light sleeping week. But I can assure you that this isn't all there is. We get a lot more precise than this, but there's some things that you have to take in consideration. Obviously. If I gave this on a YouTube video and mentioned, uh, you know, all the things that we've learned so far in the, uh, men in the mentorship, uh, it still wouldn't serve many people because they would try to overuse it. They would try to use it every single day. They wouldn't understand the PDA rate uh, matrix. They wouldn't understand the if the data ranges. They would just not have all the insights that you have. So, again, this gets back to why it can't be done in a video. It can't be just one video that does it. You have to have all the stuff that's been taught thus far, and now you can see how they start to draw together, and there's some symmetry here. So now because we are understanding these ranges, we can take our precision a little bit more further and now start to understand when we don't really want to be taking specific day trades. So now instead of trading every single trading day, while I will be forced to try to do it, I will remind you based on these rules that there is or is not a high probability setup based on the central bank dealer range being in an area of discount or premium. And we're not in a range that is conducive. In other words, 2030 is ideal in terms of pips for the central bank dealer's range. If it's bigger than that, we have a harder time getting these measurements. Okay, so remember it goes back to power three. Average daily range is about 100 pips, not always, but generally. And we look for an average of about 33 pips for a protractionary state in London. It doesn't have to do that. It can be just six pips, okay? But generally, we allow up to 33. But if we have a uh, central bank dealer's range that's greater than 40 pips, it usually messes up the synchronization for the London open kill zone. So hopefully you found this insightful. Please do not share it. Please don't be your best friend to somebody else and, and give this out to someone. Keep it to your close to your vest. Don't share it. Trust me, it's just way, way too good to be out there for everyone else to know. You paid for it, be greedy with it. There's nothing wrong with that. You earned it. Until next lesson, I wish you good luck and good trading.